Okay, I'm gonna call the meeting to order at 101. Um, I'm gonna read the announcement, which is, this is Nikki Rowland, chair of the HSAB. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, respond in the affirmative. Lucy? Yes. Angus? Here. And there is no staff. Oops, here comes Brooke. And no anticipated speakers. Uh, this open meeting of HSAB is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. For this meeting, HSAB is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Participants may find information on the conduct of this meeting at that location. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and each vote taken in the meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. So, a bunch of people joining. Wait for them to get in. Brooke is having connection issues, so he'll try when he can. Boy. <clears throat> All right, I'm just letting people in, which is a bunch. So as soon as I see most of us are here, I'm gonna start on the first application. Um, all right. <clears throat> okay, so I will start sharing my screen. Do we have to uh, adopt the agenda and everything? Oh, you're right. Thank you. Um, so moved. Thank you. Second. <laughs> thank you. All those in favor of adopting the uh, aye. agenda. Aye. And I'm an aye also. And there are no minutes to approve, so we'll skip that. All right, sharing my screen, which is, which one is it? Hang on, getting there. Here we go. Okay. Andrews. Hi, hi, everybody. I think Andrew is joining. I don't know if he's. He is. He, I just let him in. I have to keep my eye on the participants and make sure I admit people as they show up. It's the hardest part of what I do. Sorry, he's Mickey. Not... Sorry, I'm late. That's great, right, Andrew. Um, so, wait, Andrew, we're, we're just opening this up, and I'm just turning to um, the first one, 27 Fair, the main building. Sure. So you can go ahead and start. Yeah, no, I think I'll, I'll give you sort of the over, I don't know if Michael said yet, sort of the overarching concept here is, you know, we're dealing with several buildings here that have uh, have had a tremendous amount of deferred maintenance to them and, and uh, significant code issues to them, both on the, mostly on the life safety side. And ultimately just, you know, the construction of them is unfortunately in a, in a fairly poor state. Um, we, we've taken great care in engaging this historical consultant to come in and sort of evaluate the different components and pieces of each structure so that we could understand any historical significance that may exist. And at the same time, we've balanced that with, um, you know, increasing some program in some places. I think there's no, there's no secret to that. Um, we, we, we believe that the sort of, you know, front mass of both structures on Fair Street are essentially to be saved in exactly the, the same look and feel that they are. Um, we've tried to bring a level of consistency to um, trim conditions that exist on these buildings as, as you're all aware, many of the historic structures over the years would have a wide range of, of various, uh, you know, window and door trim, fascias, rakes, things like that. And we've tried to bring a level of consistency to each individual structure, not to all four structures together to create something that would feel slightly bit more cohesive. And we have created some additions. Um, so on, on this structure, our addition oh. off of the rear of the building, which is, which is replacing the portion from the 20s or 60s, um, is, a, is a larger addition, it's a two-story, one and a half-story addition. 
that, you know, we feel is, is pretty tasteful on the building. You know, I don't know if you all are aware of many of the comments that have come in from abutters. We probably don't need to take up time in this call to go through them, but we're well aware of them. We've sent them all to HTC. They have them all. Um, there's certainly some concern over some of the components and elements that we've done. But for this building, you know, we we feel like the changes are, are, are fairly conservative and pretty tasteful. Um, adding a one and a half story mass off the rear of a Nantucket style home is not uncommon. It's been done in the past. I think you could argue that the visibility of the second floor deck from the street is something that isn't that appealing to probably HSAB and HTC, but nevertheless, it's something that we're attempting to do to create um, some outdoor space. So that's really all I'll say about, about this building. Um, I, I think this is probably one of the more straightforward ones to be honest with you of the three, of the four structures. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Um, I'm gonna open with, um, like I usually do, I've got some, some notes that I'm gonna read off um, and then I'm gonna let my commission um, board members kind of comment on them and add or edit as needed. So um, this is the 27th fair, the front building. So this was built, the main part was built in the 1830s. Um, now, um, first of all, it looks like you're proposing, let me scroll down. You're proposing to replace basically all of the windows in the house with new windows, correct? Um, I believe, Michael, are we replacing all of them or are we restoring are, are, some of the original ones in the front? The, the initial goal was a like and kind replacement, Andrew, but we don't yeah. need to replace many of the windows on the front now that we've settled on this version. So it's certainly possible to just keep and restore some of those oldest on the street. Well, that's good. As you, as you know, Mickey, most people will say that they'll replace, they'll repair them and then they just end up replacing them as well. So we were trying to be maybe a little more forthcoming here saying that, you know, it's, they're, they're in terrible shape, most of them. So, you know, there's a distinct, you know, especially a house that's this close to the street, there's a, there's a difference in, a, in basically character between an old window and yeah. a new window. If they, if these were to be replaced, I think we would all notice right away that these are brand new windows. So yeah. at the moment we're looking at the application that says replace in kind on every window in the house that's not being al already removed. So um, my comments regarding that are the all the existing windows should, should be restored rather than replaced. It'll be cheaper and they'll, they'll, they'll last longer with the old, <clears throat> the old sash. Um, also, all new windows should should be um, true divided light, not simulated divided light. I think yeah, they're it, supposed to be. Did we write that? That's a mistake. We know that. Yeah. I think the application says SD check box SDL. Oh. So. That's yeah. Okay. Now, if you if you feel that you need to replace some specific windows because they're in poor shape. Um, and unserviceable, unrepairable. Um, that that may be true in some cases, but we need to see photographs of those individual windows, of, you know, to do a, an actual window survey on the building, to um, be able to judge one window at a time, yep. which ones are appropriate. And then getting down to the design, um, really, the um, I think the most contentious thing you're doing is that second floor deck in the back, and um, it's going to be visible. There's no question about it. Um, as it's proposed, I would say it's too big. We always don't, you know, in these situations, we don't want to overwhelm the roof plane, which this certainly does. So I would, my comments are, first of all, I don't think the rear deck is appropriate because it's, it's on, an, it's on a, a very old building downtown in the old historic district. And if it's got, if, if there are, if the HDC is slightly amenable to it, I think it needs to be reduced in size considerably. So it's really just a, just a small balcony rather than a full-size deck. Yep. And I'd say the French doors should be modified to be more, um, um, or let's just say less French door-like, um, smaller and more in character with the building. So, there's so many people on this meeting that I, 
I can't see everybody on my screen. So Angus or Lucy or Brooke, if you have something else to add here, um, please speak up. I may not see your hand raised. Uh, Mickey, I totally agree with you. I would like to see a complete window survey on um, this building with photographs, everything. Um, we all know that changing the windows changes the whole feel of the house. And Andrew, I, I have some real concerns about your your statement of the same look and feel as they are. I mean, to me that ends up, I mean, are we gonna have a, a, a fake historic structure in the end um, and the original material is gonna be removed? Um, this is I'm talking about, I'm talking about the consistency of the, like the window trim conditions that, um, we're trying to recreate and re-implement what is on the most historic component of the building, not additions that were done at later dates. That's an approach we took that may or may not be the right approach. More of an eclectic approach where trim conditions over periods of additions and warts being different may be something that all the boards feel is a better direction. Again, that was, that was, I'm just articulating that as that's the approach we took as you look at the elevations, you won't see three different head casings on, on various windows around the structure. Well, I'm very concerned about original material being removed. Yeah, Lucy, I'm glad you mentioned the trim because I, I, it was, it's, it's more obvious on, I think 29, but on this one, it's, it may be implied. You know, we, we like the old trim boards and, and in some cases, the old, you know, many cases, the old window casings that show some history, some evolution to the building that's changed over time. So when you say you're trying to get everything more consistent, that's probably not the direction we're looking to see it go in. We like the old, um, you know, different window casings um, explain that, you know, some, some were added at a later date and that's important to the history of a building. So we're, we're, um, you know, not not going to look favorably on seeing all the window casings, in other words, change to um, this, you know, pediment style window or or any any other style. If they if they are currently now, um, you know, one style, I think we'd prefer to see them that way. Okay. And the same with the the, the rakes and the corner boards. Um, you know, a little bit of bumps and bruises show some age and some history. And, um, you know, when you replace those with a brand new one by Chris from the Lumberyard, it's gonna look like a brand new building. And that's the last thing we wanna see. So, um, okay, Angus. Yes, so um, I can just echo everything that you've said. Um, I've looked at the windows, the windows are original and uh, should be restored. It's going to last longer than any window that would replace it. And it, it I think it really is a misnomer to say that that um, to re replace with like kind. There's there's nothing like a historic window. Um, and I'm sorry to think that that's a common practice to say restore and then they get replaced. Um, these really are the 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 parts of the uh, historic houses that remain um, seen because the shingles change over time, the roof and sidewall, um, and the windows really are the, the primary thing that anyone from the outside gets to see other than the, the uh, volume. Um, and the different kinds of trim show the progression of um, additions um, over time, and that shouldn't be lost. Um, and the, the massing that's proposed coming off the back um, is, is not typical of, um, of, this, of this era structure or design. The, the flush shed dormer um, uh, addition is a very modern looking uh, uh, addition to this house, um, especially when it's you know, on both sides and consuming most of the, the eave line and then the deck off of it. None of that looks appropriate um, or consistent with the old structure. Um, Can you elaborate, Angus, on how a shed dormer is not appropriate with a ridge that steps down? I don't. 
I don't actually understand that. Like, um, it's what exists no, everywhere. There, in town. there would be um, more typically there would be just the stepped down gable, but there wouldn't be then the break in the eave with a shed dormer facing the street. Um, flush shed dormers are, um, you know, they, they do happen, but they they're they're um, generally r rarer in um, in in historic buildings. That's a, a newer phenomena, and especially the scale of of um, taking that much eave space away um, is is uh, is the issue. And generally, that's in a spot that is not um, visible. Like it might be on the back of a house facing a yard, but um, but this is a, a highly visible. It's right on the street, uh, and will be seen. Um, and I agree about the the deck just being downscaled. It's um, a, again French doors and decks really shouldn't be within view of uh, of the street and. Um, they're, they're both there and very visible. That's all, Mickey, thanks. All right, thanks, Angus. Brooke, um, I, I think this is you on the phone. Do you, can you hear us and speak? Uh, yes, can you hear me? We can, yes, good. All right. Um, so 27 Fair Street front building, uh, I definitely agree with what uh, has been said. Uh, I agree in particular about the dormer, um, the flush dormer facing the street. Uh, on a building like this, um, I, I, I think that what would help uh, is if there were photos showing a similar phenomenon on other old buildings uh, as part of the additive massing program. Um, but uh, straight away, I can't really think of that many um, that are in the downtown area that might have uh, something like this. Um, and I also agree about the uh, the like kind windows. Uh, I would definitely, um, you know, where we're, where we're looking at the, uh, the the front elevation. Um, you know, those like Angus said, those windows have been there for a long, long time. And uh, I think you could replace the sash, do a little work on the pulley system. Um, and put on a wood storm. Those have the uh, blade lintel um, and half round casing, which to me suggests that those were later additions. Um, so I'm going to guess that those are also uh, um, way to balance, which means that they can be repaired and you can have a wood storm or something that will make them nice and will last a lot longer. Um, I do, you know, generally speaking, um, the, uh, you know, I do appreciate the way that the building steps down going back. Um, I, I think that it, it is helpful, uh, that you're sort of tightening up that back area. Um, and I also want to say thank you very much for the amount of, uh, time and effort you've spent dating all of these parts of these buildings. It's, been very helpful when looking at this. Um, well, that's nice. You guys never say nice things to me. That was very pleasant, Brooke. Thank you. I'm sorry, oh. Andrew. It's well, not... it's, it's extraordinary, like the amount of effort that you put in to, to, to date these parts. Um, so again, thank you very much. Um, and I guess I, I think that's it for now for this building. So let's just table for future buildings, the window conversation and trim condition because we've heard it, you've all said it, we're crystal clear on it. We don't need to say it again, just for everybody's <laughs> time. I think we, we understand that conversation. Well, well, we'll probably mention it for the record, but I hear what you're saying. We won't elaborate. Yes, Mickey, I would like to say that in our notes that it should be put for each building. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I agree. So Lucy, I guess, okay. Brooke, Great. any other thoughts or comments from any of you guys? Uh, nothing further from me. You know, I should ask the general public also, um, if, if anybody here wants to speak um, regarding this application, there's a number of people on the on the call. If you want to speak, just to speak up. Uh, 
this is Arthur Reed. Uh, I'm just observing, uh, I'll be uh, representing a group of about 30 neighbors at the uh, HDC meeting tomorrow. And uh, rather than presenting anything today, we're more interested in just uh, seeing what you know your comments are and uh, following through with those at, at the HBC meeting. Okay. Uh, thanks, for, and rather than take up any more of your time. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, Arthur. Uh, if anybody else has anything to say, I'm going to go ahead, or else I'll move on to the back building. And I'm seeing none. So. Um, okay. Did I? Uh... Okay, so I think I canceled screen sharing by mistake. So I'm gonna bring this up. Um, all right, now we're looking at the back building at 27 Fair Street. Yes. So this structure um, is a little odd. Um, and we are obviously, as I'm sure you all looked at, attempting to add quite a bit of program to it. So we, we've obviously maintained the 1892 portion of it. Um, however, the other portions of it, particularly the, the single story portion that's um, built into the grade, there was really no historical data um, in, in that piece. So, it, it doesn't appear to be that old the way it's nested into the grade. So we've sort of subtracted that part off um, and have tried to create sort of almost a, um, a townhome-like massing addition to the structure, much like um, maybe some of the homes on Orange Street um, have to them where it is more of a vertical face. Um, the additive massing is not necessarily um, subservient to the primary mass, but it is, it is mindful of this um, gasket component that, that sits in the middle of it. And um, it is my understanding in my years of work on Nantucket that the shed dormer components are suggestive of the age of an addition. And when we were adding on to historic structures, we are not necessarily trying to replicate them or recreate them, but create something that is of the time. And I, it's this, this is the first I've ever heard in my 25 years that shed dormers are not really something that are, are seen in town. I, I, I can, we can certainly come back with a whole host of, of references to that, but uh, I'm, I can imagine what you all say about this now. Um, we, were, we were trying to create something that did have a lower eave line, keeping the ridge line down, and ultimately um, would feel as though it was added on over time. Um, I, I don't believe in any historic district that additions that are done in the 21st century should appear to be done in the 19th century. Um, we're trying to integrate into an historic fabric but not take away from what is the historic piece. Um, I think some probably have different approaches, but that's sort of always been um, my take. So I understand the trim, I understand the windows. So again, we can probably focus more on the, on the massing components of, of this addition onto this structure. And that's all I'll say for now. Thanks, thanks, Andrew. All right, so my comments are, um, I'm gonna go to the floor plan and find that. So here is, existing and here's proposed. Um, so the proposed addition comes out, comes actually forward. This being the proposed addition, this block here, it's, um, there's space behind it. I know you got a stair back there and that's, you know, probably required for what you're proposing, but and nevertheless, it, it, the, the per, per person, I would per rather see the proposed additions set back from the main facade as, as it usually is, additions on buildings. Um, we generally try to make them, um, you know, reduce the scale and the prominence, make them um, sort of recede rather than project forward. So you've kind of done the opposite here. Here's the main mass, the main building. Yet the additions and 
you know, secondary masses, so to speak, are, are actually more prominent. So that's a concern of mine. Um, the other thing that, that I think is a little awkward is when you look at sort of the side elevation and to create, I, I understand what you're doing to, to, to maintain floor space and head height upstairs, but you've, you've created two different versions of reverse, like a, a salt box in reverse. Usually a salt box, the high part faces the street and the, the long slope faces the back of the property. Here, it's just the opposite. Um, and you know, I'm sure there are reasons for why you did it, but the net result is you've got, a, you've got what to me looks like a backward salt box and you know, compounding it with these flush shed dormers right yep. on the front of the building. Um, so there's that. Um, and I guess my other comments were to do with the, you know, we don't want to see, as you know, by now, the, um, all the windows being replaced and we don't want to see all the trim being replaced. We like to keep as much, as much of the original fabric of the building in place as possible. So those are my comments. Um, Mickey, just a, just a couple things that the, the salt box condition is actually what exists in that middle mass already. So we were kind of working with that, but I, I like what you said. I mean, I, I would prefer to reverse it to be honest with you, but we were actually working off that middle piece, which has an historic component to it, thinking that that extension iterated would work. And, and the, the stepping forward is really based on the setback lines in the rear that currently right now, the structure is, is, is over the setback line, but uh, your point is understood. I get it. Yeah, and I and I I noticed that I see I can see the existing building has that reverse salt box, which is a little you know to me it's it's awkward, but you you don't need to compound it. In fact, your addition yep. actually conceal that, so that would that could be yep. a benefit. Okay. And the notion yep. that you're actually you know you you have setbacks. I get that, um, and that's but it's not an excuse to pull something forward from the main mass. I mean, you're creating new program. That's a, that's a situation that you're creating. Yep. It's not existing, so it's you're you're creating your own hardship. You can't use that as an excuse why you're doing something that we'd rather not see. Yep. Um, so, um, Angus, Lucy, Brooke. Ang Angus, go ahead. <clears throat> um, Mickey, could you go to the floor plan, please? Andrew, I. Um, <laughs> Thank you for um, supplying the, the 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 dates on the structure. That is helpful. Uh, is it possible to to go to that slide, Mickey? That has it. It's just it's helpful to see what was happening with the massing. So when you look at the um, the first floor plan, you can see that the uh, addition in 1923 probably was just a plain gable. You know, without the um, extended slope, bringing it down more like the um, salt box. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yep, it, as far as as far as I see, the 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 new ward on the front is is um, unsympathetic to the original structure, uh, as is the longer shed added towards the street on the 1923 edition. Um, and so, uh, I think if there were um, you know, major work involved in this building. It would be great to, to Pull it uh, back. try to correct, Pull it back. try yep. to correct those uh, elements. Um, and I mean, the only townhouses I can think of are like at Tristram's Landing, where there's a row of of doors to a to a single building. I, uh, I, I think it's confusing when when you've got a bunch of doors. It's nice to see one front door. Um, and then work off of that. So the, the general concept is um, uh, doesn't seem fitting with the neighborhood or, or the surrounding architecture. Um, but as Angus, there, are, there are three doors right now because it's going into um, you know, hotel units. So I don't, I don't know how we would get to one door without then that 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 would just that would be very difficult to do. Um, I understand. I'm just saying I, I don't think that those were a, appropriate additions. I'm sorry they got through. They did. If a lot of work is going on with it now, this might be the opportunity to try to remedy it, whether it's coming in from an, another side or 
or something. But I wanted to say about the windows on this one is that, you know, there could have been a like kind replacement with these windows that were just, they were doomed to fail. They are, the trim is rotted, the sash is rotted, the, the, the gutters are, you know, failing, which is dumping on the, the windows. Um, I, I wouldn't doubt that a lot of these windows need to be replaced because they are replacement windows. A number of them, I, I didn't do a whole survey, but I think a survey would be useful in this situation. But I would say a lot of these windows need to get replaced. Yeah, we'll, we'll do the window survey for all the buildings per your guys' request. I'm sure HDC will probably ask for that as well. So that's fine. Good. Um, that's all. All right. Thanks, Angus. Yeah, to, to Angus's point about the three front doors and they're, you say they're already existing, I think that the objective is to try to make them, if, if they need to continue to make them look, you know, real secondary. And if they're on a recessed mass, then that'll, that will also help. But when they project forward, it looks like this batten secondary door is starting to look like a main door because it's on the front. It's on the most prominent section of the buildings. It's kind of conflicting. Okay. Um, Lucy? Um, um, I did have a question about, and I can't, for some reason I'm having trouble with my iPad, but the application form, it said the um, decking was natural and black. What does that mean? I have no idea. It should just be natural Ipe, or yeah, I don't know why it would say natural and black. Yeah, it says deck black slash natural. That's a typo, sorry. I think I had it on the last application too. And again, you have SDLs here. That's all. Okay, thanks Lucy. I'm Brooke. Um, really nothing further. I can only uh, maybe bring up my own little recent foray into the HTC with a similar situation where they were insistent upon pushing a, uh, a sideward mass back. And also, uh, you know, I had a, a three, three window or three bay flush dormer and it eventually got uh, whittled down to two small uh, dormers uh, with about six feet of space in between them. So um, that may come in, may come up regardless of what we would say here. Um, and then, you know, the SDL should be TDLs, especially pay, facing forward. Um, but that's they all will. I, I don't know add. how that got on there. Okay. Yep. Yep. Brooke, uh, you mentioned that shed dormer. There's two of them, but the one in particular is that three window shed dormer. You know, that's if even you know we'll we'll see how long that survives but um it should definitely be reduced in size i've um, got a shelf life of at least two weeks mickey <laughs> well well i guess we'll find out later <laughs> all right um now i'm going to ask anybody from the general public if they have any um comments regarding this application if so just please speak up And I'm not hearing anybody. So we'll move on to. Mickey, can we do the rear building first just because it's easier and quicker and then we'll do the front building? Okay. 20 um, fair. <clears throat> this is the front one. Um, You're right. Uh, the, got it. Here we go. The the rear building, and this is this is a this is a question and approach that you know we've taken and I tried to get a preliminary meeting with some of the HTC board members and, and they just said, no, you should just, you should just submit. Um, whereas our, our, our application for this building is really to, to not change the look of the building. And I, but the headroom on the ground floor is not sustainable, it's not realistic. <laughs> it's, it's sort of an uninhabitable space. And so what our application is suggesting, and again, I don't know where people are gonna fall on this. This is a, a collaborative process here. I'm, I'm not, I'm trying to gain information, not hide information, was to like raise the building up a foot on the first floor and then essentially put it back. Um, that's what we're trying to do. I, I don't know if that's like an absolute, like crazy, no way. I've also added a, secondary means of egress because you need to for code. Tried to keep it on the inside uh, portion of the 
of the structure so that it's really not visible from the street. Um, you know, this building is very quirky, very funky. It's a building that would never get approved by the HTC today in town. So we've sort of taken the approach to kind of keep it and just try to create more headroom. So I, I don't know what you guys, what your thoughts are on that, but that was sort of an approach that we took because ultimately the, the disrepair of this building is, is fairly extreme. It's gonna to have to be lifted up and put on a new foundation that ultimately, rather than cheating this, which again, I've seen many people do in town um, by building a new floor and dropping the building on top of it and getting that foot, we sort of have, you know, just kind of asking the question, just curious what you, what you all think of that. So describe what the existing conditions are. What is the head height on that first floor and what are you proposing to change it to? I think it, it's in some places to the underside of beams, it's under six feet in a few places. There's like, um, it's exposed sort of uh, rafter floor, floor joist um, beams going across and it, it's just, it's, in, it's incredibly tight. Um, and so the idea is to get it up to, I think like just over seven feet in, port, in, in most portions of it. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact heights in front of me now, but I, I believe that we were adding a foot of height to the first floor of the building. And the second floor was to remain proportionally as it is. Okay. And then the other, sorry, Mickey, and then the other change that we're doing is if you look at the photos that are on the screen right now, and you look in the lower left photo where that vertical shiplap is, right where your mouse is, Mickey, below the deck, that's essentially where we're going to be creating an entrance into the rear um, courtyard, walking underneath that deck um, is what we're proposing to do in the elevation. If you go to the next page, Mickey, I think you can see it. Oh, I'm sorry, it's the, it's the first page of elevations. You can see how we're sort of walking th underneath that, right there, exactly, thank you. Mm -hmm. I see. And that reveals, how much does that reveal this set of French doors? Um, I think there may be ultimately when we do the landscaping, it's possible there could be a gate there coming in. Um, we're trying to create more of a pedestrian connection across Hillers Lane um, so that it, this feels more as though it's one property and not two properties separated by a road. So that's sort of the, you know, the pedestrian pathway, but there still may want to be a gate. But I, I think it's fair to say that the French doors would certainly have some visibility. I, I don't think it's possible that you wouldn't see them at all, except that Hiller's Lane is a one way going the other way. So you'd have to, you know, walk and look. But. Yeah, which we do. Um, yeah. So there is, you know, I can see the lattice um, creating a, a kind of an opening space. <clears throat> yeah. And then from the, trying to get down to the next view. Here we go. This is all just open. There's no more vertical board or anything. So this is all fully exposed on this view? Correct, correct. Okay. All right, so needless to say, those French doors will be quite visible um, from Hellers. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, back building. Um, again, I'll reiterate the comment about um, you know, this, again, as Angus kind of pointed out before, the, some of these windows may be, have already been replaced over the years and may um, yeah. also be in terrible shape. So this is all case by case. Um, yep. I'm not sure what, you know, if you'll find any real historic windows here, but if we do, I think we'd like to see them remain. Yep. Um, I think some of the little awning windows actually might be some of the historic windows, the sort of crazy band of them, but most of these double hungs, I believe, are just horrible, like 60s Brasco sash, like spring ballast, you know, yep. just terrible. Yep. So window survey. Um, so um, I think my only real comment, you know, that I, I, I understand your issue with a ceiling height. It's in raising this building a foot. To me, I'm not sure I'm terribly concerned about that. I, I would just say raise it as, as minimal as possible. Can you, maybe you can go with a, a mud, mud block or something to drop the floor down into grade is, is that's possible. Um, yep. I look at those options and try to keep the building as low as it is. It, you know, it relates to, you know, it's like inches from the building next door 
from what I can tell. Um, so we're trying, don't want to see it, that relationship change too much. Um, and the obvious concern here is these French doors. They're, they're pretty tall, as I remember. I think they're like seven foot doors themselves. And, you know, it's a 18 unit, 18 pane unit. You know, often we get 15 panes. I think that, and um, regardless, a triple bank of French doors is really, to me, inappropriate for downtown. Okay. So, um, Angus, you want to go? I think you said it all, Mickey. Thanks. I, um, it, yeah, if, um, if there were any sort of screening that could be maintained with um, either the boarding that's reminiscent of what's there or some other way of screening that from the road. French doors just, you know, generally are, you know, on the back courtyard of somebody's um, house and, and really shouldn't be visible from the street. And this is, um, this is like a, you know, a foot off the street with nothing screening it. So that's a, that's a real concern. Okay. All right, um, Lucy. Yeah, I totally agree with you about the um, French doors. They're too big and there are too many of them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's about it. Okay, and Brooke. Um, you know, I, I agree about the French doors. I, I really like that you're kind of cleaning up that area. Uh, I go by there a lot and uh, it is charming in its own way, but I think that this is a nice improvement. Um, and I really, uh, I think it's a good idea to get this building out of the ground. So, uh, maybe it lasts a little bit longer. Uh, and I like, uh, Mickey's idea of a mud sill, a mud sill in order to, uh, accomplish that. Uh, so I don't really have anything material to add other than just positive, generally positive, uh, review. Great. So again, public comments from anybody speak up. And hearing none, we'll move on to the front building. The wood box. So the 1700s portion, again, aside from all your comments on the windows, which are understood and noted, um, we've our intent on the outside is to um, very much maintain that and, and not change it. We have, as you all very clearly see, taken some liberties with some of the portions off the rear. Um, and I think we, we've done that because what is there is sort of a hot mess. I don't, you know, it, it doesn't, none of it really feels very, um, well, that's not true. So, some of it is kind of quirky and interesting and other portions of it I mean, you know, truthfully don't satisfy the program that we're trying to create. So we've, we've done some things that I can only imagine the comments you'll all have. Um, but You know, along Hiller's Lane sort of tried to really embrace the quirkiness of that um, canted shed dormer condition coming off the rear and sort of maintain that level of integration into the structure. And then on the south elevation really have essentially started all over again creating far more bulk, far more mass, um, and a more open space for the restaurant on the ground floor. Um, I would, because again, the, the one story additions that are there, are in, you know, they're in such extreme disrepair that I know that doesn't mean that they should change. It's just, we sort of took this approach, right? And again, this is a conversation to understand what, what we're able to do here. And so, We've done a very simple cross gable coming off the rear with shed dormers. Um, and yes, we have put a lot of glazing on the ground floor, which we believe will have virtually no visibility from the street um, based on how tight all of these structures are and any additional landscaping to create more of a, you know, an open condition connecting to the outside. Um, that will be a terrace, not part of the restaurant. So I don't have much other more to say than that, Mickey. But here we have left some of the um, inconsistencies in the glazing patterns of the windows. We didn't try to change it and make them all match. Um, 
and we'll obviously in the window survey, you know, document all of that and, and show you all of that next time. All right, thanks, Andrew. Um, so just to, to reiterate, we don't want to see all these windows changed um, or the trim for that matter. This one, it actually did say, I think, new new trim um, somewhere, I forget where. Okay. So we really don't want to see, just, just because it looks old and might need a little repair, we don't want to see the entire thing replaced. Um, so I guess the real comment is mostly about the back of the building um, right here, this uh, yeah. west facing. You know, from Darling Street, I'm certain I was, you know, rode my bike back in there and you can see the back of this building quite clearly from Darling, which would be um, this so southern view. So it's a, it's this side here and um, the west view obviously mimics that the same fenestration. Um, massing wise, you know, this is a, you know, the original structure has, you know, quirky, but appropriate, you know, um, massing and fenestration. It's, it's, you know, probably not what you're looking for in terms of, of maintaining a business there, but um, it's existing and it, it's totally appropriate. It's, you know, this, even this sort of like bank of, of windows, which you might have a hard time getting approved today, looks, looks like it's been there for, you know, a century at least. So to change it to something as modern um, in its fenestration and completely contrasting with the existing building is a, is a tough one to swallow. Even the massing um, is not sympathetic to a 1700s building. This is just a, it's a modern addition on a really old building. And I think you can, I think, you, you know, we know that you can do better. Um, this salt box shape, this is still a pretty old, I forget the date on this piece. It's, you know, it's wonderful. It's part of the old traditional building. And I think that should remain. I think that should, that should stay as a, as a profile, the main profile of this building. These later additions, or again, I'm not sure of the dates, but- um, 19, the, the later part, the, that part, Mickey, is 1909. Yeah. And the other like sort of bent, broken back roof is um, somewhere between 1834 and 1887. Yeah, still quite old. Um, so anyway, I think you're, you get the point. I think that this is a real departure from what, um, what is existing and what we would like to see. Um, I think you can do a, much better in terms of the glazing and um, even the massing of this back section of the building. So. Okay. I'll go back to uh, Angus. Can I ask, can I ask one question, Mickey? Sure. When, what is the expectation on the chimneys that the, the chimney, I, I've done a few older houses years ago and we lift the building to do the foundation. The chimney needs to be repointed and saved at the top and preserved on the exterior. Is that correct? That's what the, in, the goal is. Yeah, we'd love to see these chimneys remain exactly as is if they were if they're right. deteriorated. Yeah. You know, we'd yeah. want to see them um, maintained so that they they don't get any worse. You know, we, yep. we're very focused on mortar color and quality. So we'd want to make sure you're not using like gray Portland cement on these. Yeah. Yeah. You know, are, are you talking about just having the chimney above the ridge line and nothing else below? No, there's gonna still be the ch some chimneys below. I'm I'm just confirming that above the ridge line, the intent is to not rebuild it, but actually save it, repoint it, and keep it as it, in its existing way. Absolutely. I mean, the, as much of the original building material as, it, as you can save um, and brick, unless it's just plain crumbling, it should be, should be able yeah. to. Yep. Um, Angus? Um. I agree with uh, pretty much what you've uh, talked about, about saving the material that could could be 1830s to 1880s in the midsection. And even the back section that's 1909, that's still 110 years old now. So um, I uh, I agree with that of, of being more sympathetic to the original building material. 
and that the proposed design really looks out of place because it's um it it uh, it's more of a, a modern design um could you please go to the floor plan like the first first floor plan i'm just i'm looking at the sort of the the proposed and the original and trying to make sense of um, what uh, the addition and the original part and there's are, are we looking at it the same is that the same floor or is that the second floor beside no, that? No, it's, it's completely new, Angus, the inside. The layout's completely different. Oh, that's hard to swallow. I know it's not our purview, but um, yeah. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna interject a similar comment here just because it's brought up. And I know it's, as Angus said, it's not our purview, but Andrew, you're changing an iconic downtown his you know this is one of the oldest buildings on the island and the interior of this building you know i'm sure everybody on this call has had dinner there various times back through generations and i don't think the public is going to look favorably on literally gutting the interior of this building i don't care how you say you're going to preserve chimneys and things it's going to be a brand new restaurant inside so that's a I, i'm going to qualify that as a personal comment on, on an interior. Understood. Thanks. I guess I interrupted you, go ahead. Well, I was just, I was trying to follow that conversation literally down through the building about the chimneys and I'm not seeing the chimneys where they, where they are, um, you know, where they would be. So- They're uh, there, they're there. The one on the right is there. And then the one in the middle is there. They're just made smaller. Okay. Well, anyway, as Mickey says, it's more of a personal thing than, than our purview, but it, it is iconic. It is historic. It's, um, it, it's, um, it's, it's painful to see how much change is, is, um, is uh, proposed here. But that's all. Thanks, Angus. And Lucy? Yeah, I'll ditto that. I mean, I, to me, you're, this is, stripping the charm out of this building. But anyway, getting back to our purview, the four sliding doors on the back of the building, um, I think are inappropriate. To be sure. Um, that looks like it should be down on Center Street. Or the wharf or somewhere. Yeah. Um, and, that, and not to mention the fact that that is a, a lot of light pollution in a residential neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Noise too. Yeah. Um, anything else, Lucy? Uh, no, I'm just, I, personally, I, I find this disappointing. Yeah. Um, Brooke, want to add something? Uh, no, I agree with it, what's been said. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna ask, there's a lot of people on this call obviously interested in what's going on here. Does anybody want to make a comment um, at this time? I'm not seeing anybody. All right. Okay. Thank you all for your feedback. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. I'm sure we'll be talking. We'll be back. Yeah. I don't think this will get approved tomorrow night at HTC, but just guessing. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. All right. Thank you. All Thank right. you all. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Mickey, I'd like to add that we want to see all these applications back. Uh, good one. Yes. Yep. That we insist on it. Yep. And the and again the SDLs and the um, full window surveys with photographs. For each application. Yeah. Can you do a chimney survey too? Is there such a thing? Sure. Documentation. Yeah, just go up and take a photo of it. Sure. Mostly applicable to the wood box building. Yeah. All right. Um, good. So we have more on the agenda besides that. So we're moving down to um, 
Nine Cabot Lane. Oh, and I need to bring this up. Share my screen. By the way, um, as you all know, the, you, the current agenda says 30 Crooked Lane is, is on our agenda, but we confirmed with Kadeem that that's out of our jurisdiction. So that was removed from the agenda. So we won't be talking. If, if that had been a historic house, it would be on our agenda, even though it's out of the core district, right? That is true. And that's something that probably slips through quite often. Um, you know, if staff doesn't recognize that, um, we need to be, I don't know how else it would get on. We just have to be vigilant about what's going through the HTC agenda without our knowing about it. But in this case, it's not historic, right? You know, I didn't even look at it in that regard. Um, that neighborhood, I'd be surprised. Um, yeah. Well, there, there is a building out there that um, is just before you get to the, uh, uh, the animal hospital um, on the left, that building is, I would say that's like early 1900s parts of it. Which direction are you going, Brooke? Left? Uh, towards the animal hospital. Is that the same? Uh, From you going north or south? Uh, I would say north. Yeah. So um, we have the right, we're on Crooked Lane here, right? Um, yeah. Animal hospital. There's, so you're saying somewhere along in here on the left? Oh, you can't. Yeah, see. The, yeah it, I don't know what, uh, yeah, it's right where, where uh, if you look at the locust map, it looks like there's a finger pointing. Yeah, well, needless to say, this we're, this is in a whole different location than that. So yeah, okay. Yeah. We're, I, don't, I don't know anything about this one. This one looks like a whole different um, spot. So getting back to this application at nine Cabot Lane, this looks like it's all about the driveway. And who do we have representing this? Hi, it's Teresa. Hi. Hi. Go ahead. Uh, well, what we're planning to do is we're just replacing the shells for brick. We're not changing the layout. So everything we see on these photographs, this shell would become brick. Yes, running bomb. Red brick. Red brick. Okay. Um, I didn't go up and look at this, but the photographs are, are um, pretty well explanatory. Um, to, my thinking about this one is that that's just a ton of brick. It, maybe it's deceiving in the photographs, but it, and, and I'm not really sure about the neighborhood either. I'm sure there are plenty of brick driveways up there, but I guess going forward, um, I, I think I'd rather see a more um, informal material like cobblestones and maybe some, if there is some way to break it up a little bit, like for instance, right here, you got which is, you know, up to the gate, like a walkway, you know, maybe that could be a different material because you're probably not going to be parking on this as often, just mm -hmm. to kind of break up the overall massive amount of, you know, homogenous material in that location. Okay. Um, Lucy, did you want to say something? Yeah, like just with the, the photographs and the locust map, I'm having a hard time understanding this. Okay. What do you mean? Well, it looks, this is a shared driveway. So where this gray, dark gray car is, that's the part, that's the driveway for Nine Cabot. Yeah. And you see the white car? Yeah. That's the driveway for the other house. Okay, so how's the division gonna be? Is it all of that shell gonna be brick? Yes, correct. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's too much brick. Yeah. Um. I agree um, with it being too much of the same material of of brick, I think um, something soft, softer, like um, as you suggest, stone, uh, cobblestone, maybe even pea stone. But um, 
But I think in this application, uh, at least going forward to the HTC, it would be helpful to have photographs of, of examples on, on Cabot or that neighborhood um, that have brick, because I can't really think of very many. Yeah, I think number seven right next door has it, but I'm not sure the extent of it. I don't know if it's just in the front or not, but I didn't take pictures. And also, I think it would be helpful in the review to have um, a site plan that shows the driveway and what's what and what's changing. Yeah, I was going to suggest that too. I'm glad you brought that up. It's it's um, I think that will you must have a survey plan of this this driveway somewhere and to show. And if you know, I, as I kind of mentioned before, maybe you can break it up a little bit with different materials, um, and the. The only way to demonstrate that would be on an actual plan, a site plan. Okay. So I would really like to be looking at that. That would be helpful to see. Okay. I, th I think uh, Angus's idea of pea gravel is, is a good uh, suggestion. Um, there's a, plus the fact that there's a lot of flooding down there, not that it's our concern, but with brick, you're not going to get much percolation. Lucy, you know where this is up on the on the bluff, not not. Oh, okay, the, sorry. Yeah. Um, site plan. All right, Brooke, did you want to say anything? Oh, I'm reading the thing backwards. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Nope. Um. You guys covered it all. Um. Site plan definitely would be helpful. Yeah. All right. Um. All right, I think we're um, we're done with that one. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, great, and I think that's it for the agenda. Right? Yep. Yeah, relatively short. Um, so, can I get a motion to approve the comments for the agenda? Yes. So, Mayor. Second. Um, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Also. Um, I guess that's it. Anything else anybody wants to bring up? No, we look forward to your comments. <laughs> I know. I got a, there's a lot of notes to, to redo. Um, I'll try to get them out as soon as I can. Thanks, right. Mickey. Thanks, Mickey. Thank you, guys. Thanks, so, Mickey. motion to adjourn? Yes. Okay, Lucy, second and buddy. Second. Mike my Angus, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. See you guys. Aye. Bye. Bye.